it's Tracy Mooney and I'm here at International Quilt Festival in Houston and we were walking by Leslie's booth and we just had to find out the story about how she created her new line of fabric. Please tell us about us. Well, I'm happy to tell you about it. Thanks for stopping by Tracy. Urban Artifacts began from my own personal work as a surface design artist and a contemporary quilt maker. I have for many years dyed and printed my own fabric and I use them in combination with other commercial prints and sometimes I've done digital transfer, image transfer, etc. And so I was, you know, I've been making this kind of work for probably 15 years or so, maybe a little longer. And uh, most of the work is done by just, I, I use a variety of very unconventional tools to make my work. So they have a little bit of an organic feel, I think. A lot of it have an organic feel. The original source for many of these prints, for example, on this little, on this little dress, this image originally was a little bit larger circle, but for the print, because of the other the other pieces in the line, we decided to reduce the size of the circle. But the source of that circle was actually um, a vitamin bottle lid. Oh, really? Yes. So it was a soy wax batik, and mm -hmm. then uh, the fa the fabric was folded and batiked, and then it was dyed with procyon dye, and. Uh, the top of this. So wait a second. So do you take do you dye fabrics and then send it to RJR for them to in print this it? line? No, or is that a batik? This was not a batik. This is actually a screen print. Okay. But the original fabric that I made in my studio was done with soy wax batik and procyon dye, wow. the thickened dye. So that has basically driven and informed all these fabrics, with the exception of a couple of marks. I spy. <laughs> yes, and you'll see these in the, the focus fabric. The uh, the image here, this little linear gradation, was actually based on a photograph that I took of something in my in my garden. And then also some of the other things are hand drawn. This cone flower is hand drawn by me. It was originally a Thermofax screen print. So all the things that you see here came from my hand at first and then now they've been translated into four color stories so I've got this this rose line a curry color story the teal and then a neutral the thing I love about this line is that as I have been thinking about the different prints I've been thinking about not only the fact that I think they all work really well together and not just in one color story but in all the color stories. I like the mix and match quality of them. But the other thing that I love about these is that I think these prints will play really well with other prints. I think, and I'm luckily, lucky for me, standing next door to Alex Anderson's line and I've been looking at the two displays and I think that the I think they play nicely together. I think Alex's uh, prints look great with mine and vice versa. That's one of the things I was thinking about when I put together the line. One of the things in the back of my head as I was thinking about it, and some people may not be aware of Eileen Fisher's clothing line, but mm -hmm. Eileen Fisher has this sort of timeless clothing line. Mm -hmm. They're lovely soft colors, but I could pick something from for 2016 line and I could go back 20 years and I could pick something out of my closet and they would be okay together. And I like that and I'm thinking about that with the fabric. So I'm hoping that not only will people like to use the entire line, but that they will see it as a as one of those things that can work nicely with other bold prints or soft prints. I just think it's that kind of line. So, and that was something I was conscious of when I was doing it. That's great. So I see over here, a bunch of adorable accessories made with the line. Yes. Can you, did you make all of those? Oh no. I am also a fortunate woman in that I have many very talented friends who are makers. So one of the sort of experiments with this yeah. was to ask people that I know and admire their work if they would be interested in making something for me with the line. And I try not to give them any particular direction in terms of the combination or I didn't call up anyone and say, hey, make a gray right. whatever, you know. <laughs> I just gave them the prints because I was very interested to see what they would decide to do in terms of the combinations of 
prints and textures. And so I think it's clear that people have very, you know, they, they took very bold uh, decisions and combined them. I love them. I love every single one of these objects, the bags, these little baby clothes. One of the things that's interesting, someone came up earlier this morning and said, is that flannel? It's so soft. I said, no, that's just the quality of this fabric. It's such oh, nice wow. quality. That's got a beautiful hand. And that was a comment I heard over and over again mm -hmm. from people who were working with the fabric was that, oh my gosh, this fabric is such nice quality. It feels so good in the hand. And I think that's really true. Mm. So how lucky of your friends to just get some fabric and get to play and you just and gave how them lucky the freedom am I that they to wanted to do it right? i mean i'm so i'm so honored that they wanted to do this for me and it's so much fun to see what they made i also ask everyone who had the fabric to make pin cushion and i thought oh. everyone would make one pin cushion but they made they went crazy look at this i i was hoping that i could get a bowl because i wanted a pin cushion bowl that looks sort of like a fruit bowl Look at that. Look at that. It's, it's overflowing. My cup runneth <laughs> over. I'm That's telling great. you. There's Look so how many great these pin are. Cushions. And you and you pick one up and there's just something amazing underneath I know. it. Everybody had their own little take. Somebody told me that they used some of their grandmother's little tissue. Vintage, but I know tissue. There's a chicken in here. <laughs> there's a chicken. There's a chicken. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. And then uh, my I friend Deborah. The bugs. My friend Deborah did all these bugs. So and she sent them to me in this little flat box and it reminded me of this pop-up book that I used to read to my kids called Bugs and Boxes. <laughs> and I told her, Deborah, you could stand out on a street corner with those bug pink cushions and right sell back. them and probably pay your ne next mortgage. People are going crazy for those things. And she said, I just had so much fun combining all the prints and I love all these different iterations of it. It's so fun. That's great. So, and then we've got two quilts up on the wall that are both going to be uh, kitted patterns that are sold by RJR. Mm -hmm. This one's called Curvilicious. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Curvaceous. Curvaceous. Okay. I always want it to be curvilicious and it's curvaceous. <laughs> sorry about that. So, Curvaceous. And this design is by Cozy Quilt. And this pattern is called Parch it's called Family Game Night Parcheesi. Oh, and this is my it does design. Look like Parcheesi. Yeah, I'm a real geek <laughs> for vintage game boards, so this might not be the first this might not be the last vintage game right? board you see from me. That's great. But I like it because hey, what are, what are most game boards if you really think about it? They're pickle dishes, right? they're you know, I mean you look at those game boards and we as quilters can identify mm -hmm. all these all absolutely the parts. quilty <laughs> parts of it so That's it's great. so funny. That's great. Yeah. That was well fun. it was great talking to you Leslie. Thanks. Good luck. Thank we you. love the line and Thank you. Uh, we can't wait by. to see what people think of it. And I can't wait to see what everyone else makes with this line. So thanks for stopping by. I'm here with Leslie Tucker Jennison and in her booth at International Quilt Festival in Houston and she has a quilt that we spied and it has a really interesting story. So tell us about this great quilt. I'm happy to tell you about this quilt. I grew up in a 50s household in a mid-century modern house. And when I was working on this line, I started thinking about one of the, the kind of iconic pieces that was in our living room of our house, which was that we had two, vent we had two pole lamps. They weren't vintage at the time, but they are now. <laughs> So Here, I've I'll got this, side. I made this vintage, this is a pattern, it's called Vintage Pole Lamps, and uh, it's really just a, it's actually pretty simple, it's really pretty simple construction because I use the interfacing technique for the shapes mm -hmm. on the pole lamp, the, the pieces on the pole were just uh, strip pieces, pieced together, rolled over, pressed, and then I did a, a applique technique with with monofilament thread and then the, the lamps themselves same thing so it's a, actually very very simple technique to do this this set so and then I you know couldn't leave well enough alone so I had to <laughs> paint that. some of the I waited I, I deliberately waited to do the painting until after the quilting was done because I thought it would be very interesting to show the contour of the quilting so even though you kind of do have to take a deep breath and you know, cross your fingers and toes maybe when you do it. I used painter tape 
to give myself a crisp edge and then working with a dry foam brush just moved across the surface with the paint so that I could pick up the contour of the quilting and it looks like some of the lamps are illuminated but it also showcases the beautiful quilting on the quilt I think so yeah so it was really would you be to willing make. to tell us the little story about the, the little hiccup that happened yes, when you were doing because I'm crazy <laughs> apparently I tend to do I tend to get inspired to do things late in the evening when I'm working in my studio and you know folks sometimes you just shouldn't do that can I just <laughs> use myself as an example just take my word for it so I go in the studio late one night and I think yeah I'm gonna start painting that quilt did I have the right color of paint no was I alert enough to do it no <laughs> but I did it anyway I started out up here in this corner and it started with this bright yellow color of paint and it was streaky and it looked horrible and I stepped back from the table and said Leslie you just ruined that quilt you idiot I went to bed took a deep breath the next morning went to the art store and got some better paint that was a little better color went back in and thought you know at this point I have nothing to lose. I better just try it again. And it was perfect. And I think the old and color. And it looks great. Thank you very much. But I think we all do that as quilters. We Don't do. we all? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I kind of want to say, there's part of me that says, you know, yeah, you got to, sometimes you've got to make, you've got to make mistakes, you know? Mm -hmm. You just hate to, that, that, I, that hesitation about not, wanting to do the next step because you're afraid you're going to ruin the quilt or it's that whole attitude of I don't want to cut into this fabric mm -hmm. because I love it so much what right. if I make a mistake you know you just got to do it there are more where that came from there's more fabric where that came from there's and more don't quilts. we all just have enough fabric that yeah we have I some mean despair I, I think <laughs> a, a very wise friend of mine said to me once and it's really hard to get your mind around this but it's true is that we have to think about our fabric as as quilt artists we have to think about our fabric like people think about paper mm -hmm. and it's hard to really consider it that way but if you do right. that you'll take more chances right. and you'll, you'll go ahead and move forward with things sometimes we get held back by our own fear right so you know this could have been a considerably uh, narrower quilt <laughs> if that hadn't worked because I probably would have had to cut off a whole because section. all the quilting was done because all the quilting was already done but you know it worked out it worked out so at the end of the, at the end of the day you gotta you gotta be bold and take chances even sometimes when you make a mistake yeah that's that's the moral of I love story it. I, I love think. it Leslie thanks so much for sharing I think You're that welcome. our viewers will relate to that <laughs> thank you thank you